All right, Nathan, what are we doing today? All right, we are getting into the LS1 today. We're gonna to start stripping this engine and putting all the Crocam goodies and all that engine parts that we have. Uh, so we're gonna be pretty much pulling this engine down to just the block uh, and leaving the crank and pistons in because uh, we've got head studs, head gaskets, and we've got seals and all that stuff to replace as well. So we're gonna be getting into the engine while Daniel is gonna be in the background cleaning the car because it is filthy in the engine bay, gonna neaten it up a bit, maybe cut out that AC. So <laughs> yeah, gonna just get stuck into this, tear yeah. it down. I'm excited. I'm this. excited. I, I, we always say it every time we're doing engines that we, that we love doing engines. Yeah, I've never done an LS before, so this will be interesting. There's a lot to pull off just the front so then we can get to the good stuff. There's just a lot of bolt-on crap that we're gonna take off first. You know what I just realized? What? I think we're gonna take the harmonic balancer off today and there's a special tool for that which we do not have. I remember we had to pull it off the LSQ and we didn't have the tool, so we had to leave it. Yeah, that could be a problem. Daniel, you might be doing a tool run today. Okay. Tool run. Yeah. That's yeah, a pain. I forgot about I just that. remembered that. Whoops. Whoops. All right, get on the Googles <laughs> and see where sells it. All right, so first things first, we're just gonna drop the oil. Well, I mean, look, either way, this job puts oil everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, it's gonna get messy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this goes. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's crusty. That's Listen to it. Yeah, My cracks good. going that way are natural, but they're it's pretty dry. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what do you want to take off? Pump? I know you want to take the AC pump off. Alright, fine, you've convinced me. Go for it. This could be the difference between his 13 and 12 second car. What do you reckon it's gonna run? I don't know. Without this though, definitely quicker. 11s. Oh, just feel that. Like, just, just rotate that. Look at that power loss. Man. Feel that power loss. <laughs> Imagine when it's engaged. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna try and do, keep bolts where they are, not have scattered bolts everywhere. Yep. So, I mean, it's not going back on anyways, but. <laughs> <laughs> How far do we go with stripping it? Now take this off. There we go. Oh, it's one whole unit. Jesus. I mean, look, it's probably better that everything comes off in one whole unit. Yeah. Alright. That's pretty heavy. Should just not run this either. <laughs> just change batteries every day. Um, the goal today is basically to strip this down, inspect it, see what we're dealing with. Not that it's going to really change what we're doing here because it doesn't matter really matter how bad it is, we're just putting it back together as is. Yeah. Strip it down, heads off, cam out, and then hopefully new cam in new head gaskets, head new starts. seals all around, new head studs, and hopefully put it back together with all the new goodies in it. We'll see how we go with time today and if we end up finding a puller for the harmonic balancer because we forgot to order one. So that could be interesting, but we'll see how we go. Otherwise, we might have to make something. We could. Yeah, it's called a winch. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Leak it, boy. Maybe leave that one on the cardboard. <laughs> yeah. All right, big ticket item next, Michael. What? Go on, go for it. What? Water pump. The what? The water pump. Do we take the rocket piss off first, though? To be honest with you, it really does not matter what we take off first. I reckon take the intake manifold off, screw it. Yeah, I'd rather take the intake manifold off because that way we're working downwards. Yeah. Look, devil clip. It's so fast. Yeah. The hose isn't rotating. I'll, I'll twist it if you. Maybe if we go off there. How good a gunky are this one? Let's take this bracket off. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. What size is that? 7 down. You're gone, you devil clip. Hey. Done. Oh, that was really up there, huh? Yeah, look at how crunchy it is. Yeah, I know. Body body clean, for sure. I know, right? Ooh. Oh, oh. There, gunta. Kill, kill. Ready for this? Go for it. Oh, wow, it's already coming off. 
No, they must be glue though. I think they're just... Go, you do it. Thank right, you. Now, ready? We'll both do it. Together? Yeah. Go. <laughs> Oh Holy crap! Is that freaking termites? <laughs> Holy crap! What the hell is that? It bugs. Is that a maggot? That's bugs! Yeah. Ew. What's that? It's a catch can. That is disgusting. That is gross. It's like it sat in a paddock or something. I know, yeah. Which it didn't, but it looks like it did. That's bad. That's like... Gross. <laughs> That's nasty. That is nasty. All right, we're up to our knock sensors, and we got this one off after maybe five minutes trying to figure out how we do this because we didn't want to break the actual clip. We Googled it. What you do is you get your pliers in here, like so, and squeeze from the side, and they just pop straight off. And we didn't break anything, which is good because we were just gonna reef on them. <laughs> That's good. That's a win. We've had a win today. I've got this little tiny filter removal tool which I had to buy specifically for my VF, I reckon this was for. Because <laughs> it's so tiny. <laughs> Watch your hands. <laughs> <laughs> good design, eh? <laughs> it's cake the filter. <laughs> and you hang shit on board design. At least it just spills out one end. <laughs> Usually it's not this bad though. Oh man. Well, I got a little bit on me. <laughs> Can I get a rag? Raggy. All right, we'll just let that drain, eh? Yeah. This is gonna clean up nice. It'll look good. I love pulling engines apart because everything I look at, I go, well, it looks like what I think an engine looks like. <laughs> God's quick to tear it down, isn't it? It's quick to tear it down. It's another thing to put it back together. Put it back together. It's like, where does this go? The biggest thing I'm nervous about today is getting the cam in the right spot. That's the thing I'm most nervous about. Are these interference motors? That's that's my that's my next question. Because if if they're not interference, <laughs> then it's not so bad because you know then it just stops running. Yeah. But if they're interference, eh. Could be a problem. oh. <laughs> hey, Now it's getting exciting. <laughs> this is the part that me and Nathan are the most nervous about. Yeah, definitely. This is the hardest bit and the most nervous. Remember how scared we were when we started the Fairlane for the well, first time? I'll be scared on this as well too, but yeah, at least it's I not my engine. I'm really scared. Because it could just uh, go from um, boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tight. These are definitely going to have to be talked. I wonder if I have to take those knock sensors out. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we're about to drop ahead. <laughs> okay. Do you want a hand or? I reckon we might get a hand. I think so. You ready? We're gonna go and put it on that side of the bench there. Oh wow! Aluminium heads. For Aluminium the heads. <laughs> that is light as. No leaks or anything like that in the gasket. No, it doesn't look like it's been leaking. Looks like it's had a good seal. There's no major lift in the bore either. No. No. Good no. Feels good. Yeah, that's, that's actually look, that actually looks really good. Yeah, surprisingly. Let's get the other side off. Yep. And, um, go the... I don't know whether you can tell, but we're pretty nervous at the minute. There's not a lot of joking going on at the minute because this is the nerve-wracking part where we're about to put a cam into an engine that isn't just like an old 253 or 308. That I would be laughing and having fun with. I've done that a few times, but this is very different mm. compared to what we're used to. And the other fact is that well, this isn't our car. <laughs> We'll give this to Daniel and he can clean this up. And we'll go from there, I reckon. Pull the other side off? Yeah, let's pull the other side off. Alright, head number two. <laughs> Woo! 
Mercy. This is pretty much the epitome of backyard built, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is as bad as backyard as you can get. Two idiots that have no idea what they're doing when it comes to engines if we just read the instruction book. And yeah. Even then, we're like, I'm sick of reading. Let's just, <laughs> let's just have a crack. Because I was reading it before, and it was going through all these technical stuff about lighting cans. I'm like, it's got a lobe on it. <laughs> you know, it's, it can only go in one way. You're going to start taking that out. I'll try work on the harmonic balancer. Yeah. Yeah, I'll finish taking all these out. And then we should be ready to slide the cam out. Yeah. So these, this is all getting replaced. Yep. Just take note of which way they went in. So if there is a, if there is like a way they go in, we know. So our biggest problem today we, we might have is this harmonic balancer. You normally has like a custom tool for it to actually hook onto these little parts of the balancer here. We don't have that tool. We forgot to order it. Didn't even think about it. So we have we're gonna have to jerry rig something up because we can't get one either today. There's none around. Yeah. So we're gonna do what we do best. Hack it! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we come to a conundrum. This ball here is really, really tight. Way tighter than what I expected it to be. We tried putting a couple of bolts in the back of the crank and then putting in a screwdriver to stop from turning, but the bolts don't really hang out very far enough, so it was just going to slip and it was starting to actually bend the rod that we, the bar that we were using, so it's just not going to work. So I think what we're going to have to do is put the flywheel back on. So the only problem is to do that though, I need to get this off the engine stand, put the fire back on and then put it back on the engine stand and do the process. So we thought about how heavy it is and seems like we're here, we might as well see if that'll work and if we don't bring down the roof of the shed. Can't be more than like 100 kilos maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're about to find out. This is built to hold a rooftop tent, not to hold an engine, but we'll see what happens. This is dangerous. <laughs> I think it's almost lifted. It. That seems to be working. Okay. Pull the pin. Now what? I don't know, this is your, <laughs> your, your plan. Just hit it. It's going. You yep. got it? Yep. Wow. Why the hell don't we use that thing? Why don't we just use this straight up? <laughs> we do this every time. So obviously this thing is a really gunky engine. There is just gunk built up all over it. So what Daniel's been doing in the background, he's been actually working with a parts washer. We reached out to CRC and they were kind enough to send us over this awesome parts washer to have a play with. And what is actually kind of cool about this is this is an environmentally friendly parts washer apparently. So it doesn't actually use solvents, it uses little microbes, little living organisms that live in these filters in here. In this thing here, the ore goes in and the actual living organism actually eat the oil and all that sort of stuff, turns it into like CO2, which just gets released out in the atmosphere, and it's all good after that. It's actually working really, really well. They've been working with it this whole time while we've been doing all the rest of the engine. And the condition of the parts are coming up in are amazing. Like, you look at this here. This is a rocker cover, the way that it came off the engine. You can see how gunked up it is. All right. This is the end result that he's come up with, just from washing in that alone. Have a look at that. If you remember the alternator, the AC compressor, the power steering pumps, that was all gunked and caked in oil. And it's come up amazing, but the best bit is, have a look at the heads. This is our old head, this is what we're dealing with here. You can see how gunked up and, you know, chunky it is, full of grease and grime. And this, after what, maybe 10 minutes of working on it, has come up mint. Brand new, we could sell this. Yeah. Great coat head. I've got an idea. If it doesn't fit in the parts washer, you make it fit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Beautiful. This is Nathan's dream. <laughs> I turn it on. What you doing, Nathan? Oh, you know, just scrubbing my engine. <laughs> <laughs> Where the 
good job, doesn't it? I know. That was really good. Very impressed with it. Well done, you little buds in there. <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing right now. Yeah, they're heating up like, the oil. Oh my god, dinner! So uh, right now we're testing the tensile strength of my roof winch that was designed to hold a rooftop tent. And so far it's working <laughs> great. <laughs> really good. <laughs> How good is the fact that it comes out warm water too, or I warm know. fluid? So Nathan and Daniel went to town. They cleaned up the block and then that parts cleaner over there. It actually came up. It comes up really mint, to be honest. That thing works really well. So it's definitely surprised me, considering that yeah. it's, it's not solvents, it's actually yeah. a living organism. <laughs> um, but now that we've done that, we're gonna try and get this off now. And hopefully this works, otherwise we're stopping here today. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep. There yeah, we do. It's working. It's working. Of course. Oh, okay, it drops down. Hey, good timing. So I guess we gotta pull that oil pump off. I grab that box, see if we got an oil pump before we go any further with it. Let's not see how it goes on. Yeah. Is that the whole pump? Yeah. So I guess we take the old one off. See uh, yeah, so it's got that gear, spins. Is there an instruction <coughs> on that? Like do we have to like Vaseline it up? Packaging assembly has a spring and a nut. Oh god! All right, I'm going to leave that with you to read, and you come back to me with the answer. Okay. So, esta bomba de asiente USA dos tipos diferentes. Is it all? No, on the back it's English. Oh, I should have taken that French class. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You can tell these were uh, built in Mexico, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna f rotate the engine over because we need to get the sump off so we can unbolt the pickup tube from the oil pump so we can get the oil pump off and then we're gonna focus on fitting the cam and we're gonna go over to the heads and change over the springs and I think, I think we're gonna call it there. Yeah, I reckon. For today, because um, we're still short on a few parts. So yeah, but we're getting, if we get the cam in today, it'll be good, good goals. Yeah, I reckon. And the valve springs. Yeah. Um, because then it's a matter of just putting it back together with all new parts. Yeah. So, flip it over? Yep, let's do that. Is it heavy? Yeah, just take a bit of the weight at the end. Yep. That's it. Yeah, there goes that water. And the rest of it. Ready? Get it oh. Ah! Well, that's it. Lucky we muffed. <laughs> How do engine shops keep their floors so clean? Yeah, right. That's not too bad though. Get super extendo bar and go to town. Yeah. You'd still have to get the power down. There we go. Um, do we bother looking at the main caps or do we just send it? Send it, it is. Ooh. That's it. Cool. There's pie. There's rest. <laughs> All right. Now for the scary bit. So where we're at, the timing chain has a bit of slack in it, but the book says if it's over 16 mil, it should be replaced. But we're currently at 12 mil. So we're tossing up, do we replace it or do we just keep going? I guess it's really up to the owner. What do you want to do? I want to leave it. He wants to leave it, we'll keep going. <laughs> so like Nath was saying, <clears throat> the reason why we don't have a timing chain to replace it with is because we just completely forgot about it. We didn't even think about ordering one. So we haven't got one. Should we put one in? Probably. Are we going for one in? We don't know yet because it sort of opens up a can of worms for us trying to replace this and removing this sprocket as well too. There's another special tool that you need to remove that, which we don't have. So it's really sort of, there's a lot involved in it by the sounds of it. Book says that within 16 mil of play, you're right. So if I hold this at 20 here and I come back and I get down to eight, I've got about 12 mil of play. So we're well within spec of this timing chain being okay. Obviously the only concern is the fact that it's an old timing chain and now we're putting performance upgrades onto it. I don't think the valve springs we're putting in are massive. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but we're probably just going to leave it. What we're doing now is we're um, zip tying the timing chain to the, to the cam gear and we've put some marks on the timing chain down here to the crankshaft sprocket. 
Uh, the reason being is that way so we can sort of lift this off, take the cam out, put a new cam in and slip back on and hopefully everything stays where it should. That's the idea of this. So we're going to pull it out now, see what happens and go from there. It's camshaft time. It's camshaft time. <laughs> Time to commit now. <laughs> it's always scary the minute you touch timing. Yeah. Okay, so we just pull this down, huh? Yeah, man. Oh, well, that's off now. Pull her out, man. Is it coming out now, you reckon? Yeah, man. She's ready. Unless there's a gear at the back, we'll find out. Hey! That's one camshaft out. So the cam that we have, the part number on it is Crow Cams 1745. What does that mean? We don't know. We just went to Crow Cams and said we need a cam for an LS1 Turbo and this is what they gave us. For anybody that wants to know, here are the specs. Freeze frame it if you want to read that. Because <laughs> all of that means nothing to us. We don't know what any of that means. Well, Nate does. Nate did a bit of research on cams. More than what I ever have. Anyway. It's going in. We had a look at the bearings. They're not great, but they're not terrible either, I suppose. It's kind of what you'd expect from this sort of engine. If we're going to look at replacing them, it's a whole like crank out deal and bottom end's going to come out to be able to replace them. So we're just not invested into that at this stage. That's just too much for what we have a budget for and what we have time for in this build. So Daniel's happy. We're going to throw this back in and we're just going to send it and see what happens. All right, I guess there's nothing left to do other than put it in, eh? Yeah, should we lube it up? Yeah, let's lube it up. Just about to get slippery. All right. <laughs> in we go. The right way? Yep. Yeah, mate. That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Where's that torch? <coughs> yeah. This is where it's going to get tricky. Yeah, this is where it's going to get hard. Now, I've heard about putting bolts in the end of this to be able to hold it up. Maybe we should have done that. <laughs> so I think I saw this idea on the skid factory when they were doing it with John. They put long bolts in the back of the cam. And hopefully we can use this as a little bit of leverage to get it in. Oh, that's heaps easier. Yep, keep going. That makes a world that's difference. That's it. You're almost home. There you go. There we go. Now, if I check the micrometer of my hand, there's no movement in that, so we're good. Beautiful. Yeah. Alright. Well, that wasn't that hard. Cam gear. Cover plate, cam gear, oil pump, pump check cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to say there's a torque setting for those. Yeah, there will be. We'll have to check that out. Eh? Because this is where torque settings matter. <laughs> no double clicks. No, no double clicks here. On goes the cam gear. That is now over top. <laughs> Probably. Alright, our lines are back on. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get roasted for this. <laughs> The best bit is, if it blows up, it's just extra content for us. Exactly. And we get to rebuild a fully forged internal engine. Yeah. On whose budget? <laughs> it's not our budget. Right. We're going to fit the oil pump now. Fitting instructions are pretty easy. The only thing it does say is to pre-lube the, the gears in here. So it just says to pour oil down here and rotate by hand. And then it's pretty much bolt back on. And then you've got to choose the right O-ring for the pickup tube. And uh, that's it. Talk it down. All right, let's give it a go, eh? Yeah, so do you want to pour oil down this while I spin it? Yep. I'm going to get covered in oil. Yep. Yep. Spin. Spin. Look at the bubbles. Oh, it sounds better already. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a lot different, isn't it? Yeah. It's bubbling, so that means it's got to be doing something, right? Yeah. I don't know. Feels good to me. Cool. Let's go for it, eh? 25 Newtons, that's what it says. 25. There's different styles of pickup tubes and it depends, there's two different O-rings in the melling oil pump set and it says if it's straight, you just use the black one. If it's tapered or has a ridge, you use the, uh, a green one that comes in it. Yep. Um, so this one well, looks straight to me, there's no taper there, so I'm just going to assume it's this one. <laughs> we'll know when it gets some oil pressure. 
True. There's a lot of there's a lot relying on me right now because yeah, no. oil pressure is the biggest thing. I like how Michael put the camshaft in. I'm leaving that with you. <laughs> oil pumps on. Everything's talked up. Our tube is back on. Flip back over. We'll drop the lifters in. All right. So we just can't do it. <laughs> we can't go on and leave that timing chain as it is. Even, <laughs> even we are not that dodgy. So it could be fine, it might not, but then we just looked up on what a timing chain's worth, a double row timing chain set with sprockets. They're only worth like 200 bucks. So for the peace of mind and knowing that we have a new timing chain on it and a double row timing chain, we're actually gonna stop here working on the engine. All we've done now is we just fitted the oil pump. That's easy enough to pull back off and then slide back on again. It's no big deal. So that pretty much brings us to the end of today's efforts. We didn't get halfway near as much as we wanted to get done, or maybe we got exactly halfway, I don't know. The engine is stripped down to basically as much as we're gonna strip it down to. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the day. A big shout out and thank you needs to go to Daniel who was on this parts washer all day long as our dishwasher, basically cleaning everything up. And you know what, this thing, did an amazing job. It did. So thank you to CRC for hooking us up and sending this out for us to play with and have a go at. Really, really good bit of kit, really impressed. So if you've liked this episode and you'd like to see where this ends up, please make sure you consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It goes a really long way to helping us do what we do here. And if possible, if you'd like to head on over to the Hack Shop Garage website, where you can buy a bunch of merch, t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, fender covers, all that kind of stuff. It really goes a long way to helping support this. For all the parts and pieces that we've been putting onto this engine today, although we didn't actually put too much on, <laughs> uh, you can find that all at TR Performance's website, as seen at Hackshop Garage, where it lists basically all the parts that we bought through that website. Anyway, until we get the timing gears and all that other stuff for this engine, we'll uh, catch you in the next episode. Like a fully sick bonnet cutout that like scoops in and just feeds the turbo cold air. So my Wuhan can whistle. <laughs> that bank. That bank. Nathan. Michael. Well, which side did I get? Shorts. Pants. <laughs> I choose this side because I got this bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> that is the world's longest rag. That's just a t-shirt, that's not a rag. I was about to say put it on. <laughs> Wicka 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 slim shady. <laughs> Turn it up! <laughs> <laughs>